Hello everybody. Right, just get myself sorted, make sure I can see you all. Thank you a minute. Right. Oops, sorry, we are going. I'll just get it so I can see your messages. Right. Wow, we are on. Hello Julie. This in the right place. Okay. Just gonna move this for a moment. Right, let's find the page. This is my giant art journal again. I did the page in a couple of days ago, you would have seen possibly. Um Let's just go here. Right. No, the problem with the big art journal is it's a very small desk, so let me just move things around so I can fit it in. Uh, pop that over here. No, I don't think. Okay. Hello, Diane. Oh, it's too much for me, I'm afraid. Can you hear me okay? So, I'm going to be doing an art journal page today that was requested by Shona. Hopefully she's managed to catch our video. Um, let's see if I can invite her actually. This is much better looking on the laptop. Oh, okay. She doesn't like to ask Shona. Oh well, that's mine. Oh, thank you. So, um, yeah, she wanted to see some rice paper used in an art journal and pretty things, I think she said. So I've got a piece of rice paper here. This is from Vintage Stories AB Studio. Obviously, it's normally A4. I've already used some. So I'm going to use that. I thought I'd use some old uh, music paper too that would go with that. And then I basically just went through my drawer and pulled out lots of scraps that I've got um, of papers or not just scraps but like little backgrounds and stuff that I've made so I've got some of my alcohol inks I may be able to use um, where I've wiped off things or mopped up uh, bits of um, ink and things and then pulled out all the scraps of paper where I've been doing projects recently some jelly prints um this i mopped up a load of the um color glows um this one oh i've forgotten the size it is something like 14 inches i've had the band on let me see if i still can find it hello pam um, excuse me while i rustle a second find it it's the very large Dina Wakefield journal it's on our website um so have a look so it's the Dilusions journal so it's this is the one I normally use so this is the same journal with the different papers like Craft, Hessian, um, all sorts of different papers but this is the large version um it's i think it's something like if i get a piece of paper that will help i think it's 14 inches by something so let's have a look oh i could just get a ruler couldn't i that would be sensible <laughs> what a donut sometimes so it is the pages inside are yes 14 inches by 10 inches so 14 long, 10 inches wide. So it's it's a bit of a beast. 
and you can get these on the website so our website's thompsonscraftsupplies.com if you want to check anything out right so let's start looking at some things so i found some cork i thought that would go nice um this is music paper i said i'm going to use the rice paper as well um we'll come to normal papers in a little bit here's a bit more old paper um so i think that'll do to start so i need to use a thinner gel because i'm using rice papers and more delicate papers so i don't want it to tear so i'm going to use fabrica deco medium acrylic which is the same as matte medium so it's a thin gel quite runny that dries matte okay and i with this particular brand i've said it before but i like to um, add a little bit of water so I usually, and this is a bit bad, do it in a bowl would probably be better. But I add a bit of water to my lid and then scoop in some um, gel. Um, you probably want to give this a coat in clear gesso first. I know I'm going to um, seal my papers after though. So I'm not going to do that on this occasion. But if you do a coat of clear gesso or white gesso first, that would be a good idea. So because it's quite big, um, I'm going to do this in kind of section so that the gel doesn't dry before I have time to use it. Stay. So I'm going to start with the um, music paper because I've got more of that than the um, rice paper. So I'm just going to start adding sections. I don't need to cover all of the paper. I will, as I said, seal everything after. So any blank bits, I can um, pop some gesso or some of this matte medium over the top afterwards. Um, the matte medium isn't so bad in this brand. Um, it's more the clear gesso that I water down, but I you can water this down as well um it's still very sticky and nice so it just makes your product go a bit further so this is as i um put on my post it's a really great way to use up some of your scraps so bits you've got left after a project especially if you're doing something like an album or um hi neelam um you know something where you're cutting from a larger paper to make small things like pockets and stuff you've usually got quite a few bits left over or if you've done some fussy cutting from a bigger sheet perhaps um you've probably got bits and bobs left over so this is a really good way to use them up <clears throat> I would say don't keep every tiny piece because you get into a bit of a hoarder's uh, habit and um, you'll probably find some of those are too small to be useful um, so probably wouldn't keep everything just deem is it you know is this useful right this one's a bit thicker um, and a slightly different color so I'm going to add some of this as well something a bit different so all a bit hapdash you know no no science no rules or anything with this bit uh, did i have another piece of that or was that it that's it okay that's fine and now i'll bring in my rice paper um with the rice paper um to get the nice soft edges it's good to um, use water just water and a brush 
um, so you get this feathering effect on the edges so it's like cutting out with water so you just trace a line with your water and then carefully pull away and you'll get this can you see that really soft feathery edge so it just helps the um, paper blend into your background uh, nicer rather than just appearing to sit on the top um, and look a bit out of place uh, where's my rubbish bag on oh there it is okay so i'm gonna i'm going to use all of this so i'm gonna tear the whole board off And then I will tear some shapes from it using the water again. Hello, Mum. How are you? Right, so I'll just kind of cut up the uh, paper using my water into some smaller sections. And this is just a, a pattern, it's not got shapes, but this is um, the really good way when you've got a paper that's got, say, flowers on or something like that, um, where you don't want the background, the white background, say, it is on. Um, this is a good way to kind of cut those out from that without getting that really sharp edge you would get with a pair of scissors. So where we've got those nice soft feathery edges now, we can smooth out from there with our brush and it really just helps that blend into the background nicer. So it's, um, yeah, as I say, it's more noticeable when you've got an image um, rather than this background. Uh, especially if you've got a coloured background and the rice paper has a white background. Sorry for the noise outside. Um, you'll really see that sharp edge if you don't soften it with water. Okay, nearly done on this background. Then we're going to do some stenciling and some colouring, I think. And then work with some of our papers. Okay, so before I do um, any kind of colouring, as I said, there's lots of blank bits and I want to seal this page. So I could either carry on with the matte medium would be fine because it's matte, it's not gonna resist, or a clear gesso. Uh, because I didn't gesso my page first, I'll go with my clear gesso. So this is the Fabrica one again. And as I mentioned, I like to water this down a little bit because it's a bit thicker than a lot of clear gesso brands and I'm not looking for texture, I just want to seal everything so i'm just going to put a bit of water in my lid um before you put the lid back on if you do this give it a good wipe wipe it out i was just going to leak down the side of your jar and when it's something sticky that's not great because when you come to then reopen that jar you're going to find it quite difficult to open again so i'm going to seal my whole page now so this will stop seeping through to the next page and it also makes your colours more true. So it's going to sit on the surface, the colour, rather than seeping through into the page and becoming a bit duller. Um, especially if you're using, say we were on a craft page or a black page, um, it's just going to seep in and not be the best colour, not be quite what you wanted it to be. 
Um, be careful when you're going over rice papers, they're, they're quite delicate. So don't scrub too hard, um, or you're going to wipe away that image. And there's me putting the lid on, <laughs> doing what I just told you not to. Um, yeah, so don't scrub them too hard. You know, they're, they, you will rub away the colour and the image. So just be careful how wet you get them and how hard you push with a brush on them. Okay, so I can get rid of that now. I know I won't need that. Um, I was going to do a bit of crackle as well. So let's dry this. It's important to take time to dry um, between layers or your book's going to get very, very wet and you're going to damage the integrity of the paper. Um, the paper fibres will start to sort of mush up and you're going to end up with a very, very delicate, fragile piece you're working on. So take the time to stop and dry you know if you're using an ink spray say put a bit on and then give it a dry and then carry on you can keep adding more and more layers but we need to dry between those layers um, especially with things like gesso um, if you don't kind of stop and dry that and you just keep adding more it's never going to dry properly and you get this gunky kind of mess and then the things you're going to try and put on top just won't sit right. Um, they will probably mix with the gesso and just not be great really. Okay, that's dry enough just to do my next layer. Um, so I want to pick a stencil first and do some stenciling with paste so oh uh, look at that that's exactly what i said was going to happen i have all this good advice but i don't follow it myself my my gesso is now leaking out of the jar because i didn't wipe the lid <laughs> idiot right so some paste let's see what i can use here we go, Fabrica Texture Paste, my favourite. And let's find a stencil. I, I started looking for a stencil this morning and then I ended up sorting out my entire stash of stencils and um, chipboards that I have in the basket next to my camera. And then I actually forgot to get stencil out. So let's pick something. Let's go with these clocks. This is AB Studio stencil uh, ID 214. You can find in our shop. And uh, this will go nicely with the vintage. So I'm going to just use regular texture paste for this. This is Fabrica one. Um, I like it, it's nice and thick, has a good chalky texture. So um, if you were to apply, say, inks over the top, it clings really well and it puffs up nicely too. So I'm a fan of this one. I'm going to just do random areas. I'm not going to do the whole stencil. And in art journaling, the background is really important because we we are limited as to how much dimension we can add we need to think more in flat layers um so all these little steps are really going to add to the overall look because we can't add tons of layers and decoratives like we would do on a scrapbook page say because you won't be able to close your book um so being really creative with background effects and papers and things is is really how you get the look in a art journal um, but it, it's whatever you use there's no there's no right or wrong this is you know this comes from my kind of oops um mixed media 
you might not be a mixed media person that uses papers or you might not stencil you might draw you might use uh, pens or um crayons so whatever it is you like there's no rule but we do have to think to keep it fairly flat this is a, a journal where the pages are sewn into a spine so it's not on rings or anything like that so we really do have a limited amount of dimension we can build I'm just giving that a wipe off and we'll clean it properly later I'm going to give myself a good wipe because I'm a bit sticky so just some random areas of stenciling there and I'll just wipe off my palette knife too and then I'm going to add some crackle paste just with my palette knife I think so let's move that one out of the way so the crackle paste system that I like to use um, recently because I'm not the best person with crackle paste so having one that's reliable is really important to me and I've never had this one not work so you have a primer and then a paste so you put the primer on and then apply the paste over the top you can dry it with a heat gun as well it doesn't affect use um, I'd even say it actually works better with a heat gun um, yeah it's really good um, I've had other ones where it's not always worked and it's really disappointing when you do crackle and you're expecting this ooh moment and then nope nothing it's like oh well that was great and then you're kind of stuck like oh what do I do with this now then so I've never had that with this now I need to remember roughly where I've stenciled because I need to dry this layer first so this gives like a glossy effect that something in there then reacts to the paste and makes it crack so I should be able to see shiny patches um, you don't need to go nuts with the uh, primer to be honest I've put a little bit too much on there um, it doesn't really alter how it works as long as you've covered the area um, but with the paste you can apply it in different thicknesses and you'll get different looks so a very thin layer you'll get fine crackles and lots of crackles and with a thicker layer you'll get bigger cracks and less cracks so we'll try and do a little bit of both so you can see and you can use the crackle paste on um, any surfaces um, if you've got a glossy surface like a metal I would probably prime that first with some clear gesso or white gesso or black gesso depending on what you're doing and then apply your uh, primer and paste and you can use a brush if you've got a round surface so that's fine If anyone has any questions at any point, do you just shout. Well, don't shout, I won't hear you. <laughs> but, but type in the comments and I will keep an eye and answer you. Yeah, so it is leaving a shiny patch so I can see where I then need to apply the paste. Um, it doesn't matter if I don't cover the whole area of the primer as long as there's primer where I put the paste otherwise it's not going to crack um, you would just be left with a regular looking paste which is fine if you miss some areas but yeah obviously you need the majority to have primer that should be enough Okay, right, the paste. Oops, I've got one open, haven't I? Oh, I'll open this one. Save me faffing about down there looking for it. And 
I like to just give these a stir a bit and then you because they're moisture in them and um, settles a little bit so just give it a bit of a stir okay so let's see so I had some here and here And there was some down here. And up there. And here. And you can use this for a stencil as well. So what you could do is just put your primer everywhere. Say in a say you're using a six by six stencil. You could um cover the a whole six by six square. Just with a brush or um, palette knife uh, so it's everywhere and then put your stencil down and use your paste on top okay i think that was all the areas did i do some here i can't see that <laughs> that'll do right and now we need to dry it so i put a bit thicker and a bit thinner in some places obviously the thicker you put it the longer it's going to take to dry so just bear that in mind and we should quite quickly be able to see it cracking as long as you've got that primer underneath it will crack i've never had it not work i mean unless you've got some sort of extreme temperatures i can't see that it won't work and already i can see this is cracking just lovely so I've done this first before the color so that I can also color these pasted areas um, so we don't need to keep it white we can color it and I need to remember to dry my um, regular stenciled areas as well I think uh, Simone is watching, it says on my phone, but it doesn't say on my computer. Mm -hmm. okay, so I've got a bit too much there. Hello Cleo. I'm just going to take that bit off and leave it a bit there. I like that bit. Is it all running okay, Cleo? That made me a bit nervous though. Oh, I hope you're all right, you guys. Bit of a nightmare you're having by the sounds of it. Bless you. Hello, Rebecca. Oh, I'd be glad to turn this heat gun off. It's a bit warm. hold my page up in a minute so you can see those crackles better so this is a great um, thing to use if you're looking to get an aged look or a worn look on your work on a break oh bless you get it makes sure you get a drink my age is having a bit of a mare today as well it's all going a bit wrong at work so, so far I've applied some old book papers with my um, matte acrylic, medium acrylic or matte medium. Um, I then added some rice papers using the same matte medium 
which I'd cut out if you like and softened by using a paintbrush and water. I've used the clock stencil with some texture paste and I've applied some crackle paste as well um, just with a palette knife and I'm just giving it all a good dry now before I start colouring. And then we're going to start to build up the actual layout um, once the colouring is done. Oh, thank you Michelle. That's good. <laughs> Always nice to hear. Um, once you get into the point you're going to add wet stuff, bit of a tip in a journal. It's not really rocket science, but obviously you've got pages underneath. So it's a good idea, if you can, to put um, something plastic in between, if I actually had room, in between your pages to stop so that if any of that does run off, it's not going to run onto the next page underneath. Just while you're doing any wet work. <laughs> wet work, that sounds a bit funny, doesn't it? So just something like this. I use like my stencil packets. And get that right in there so the gesso should stop anything on the page but just if it runs off the end there right so let's have a think oh i was going to show you can you see the crackles is that showing up yeah it's showing up i apologize for the shadows it's extremely sunny today isn't it let me try and make that a bit better that's a bit better i think Oh gosh, I'm hot now. Right, so colouring. Oh yes, I did get some stuff out. So it's wedged in the corner over here. Um, I'm going to use my uh, powdered paints today. So I've got Magic Paint by Fabrica Deco in chocolate bronze. And I've got Amber and Golden Calcite from 13 Arts, the colour glow. So these are basically powdered pigments, um, powdered watercolours. Um, and they both, these uh, brands, are two-tone metallics. Um, so this has a brown pigment with a bronze metallic shimmer. And these work kind of the same. So we've got like a yellow pigment with a golden glow and a, a um, bronze pigment with a, a bronzy kind of uh, glow which we'll see in a minute so how they work they work basically the same yeah i love that stencil really nice one uh, this one is in a little pot so you just open it up and tap some around and they are quite pigmented so don't go too nuts um, you can always add more, but it's harder to take it off. And then you waste it as well. So start with a little bit. Now these are big pots. So once I open this, this is a, this is a, a open jar. So I tap the lid to get that powder down. And then I always open it over either what I'm working on or um, a mat so that I don't waste any that comes out when I open it. So these look like this, okay? So... It's um, easier if you want to scoop out, say you want to mix this into something, then it's easier for that, but you just have to be a little more careful when you open it, okay? And then, and again, when I'm putting the lid back on, just doing it over my work in case any comes out. Oh, look, the cat's arrived. <laughs> um, I... Did I say he went missing for ages? It's not my cat, by the way, as I tell you. But yeah, he went missing for a bit and then he reappeared with the most frightened look on his face I've never seen from an animal. So I think he must have got stuck somewhere. Poor thing. Right, we'll start with that. Um, I want to keep quite a vintage vibe, so I don't want too much yellow. And then our water spray. Um, oh, sorry, knocked you. Now I spray kind of at an angle so I don't send the powder flying everywhere um, or if I'm mixing them on my mat I'll put the water a little bit away from the powder and then work it together with my brush so that you don't blast those powders everywhere and this mix should give me a nice vintagey 
colour. It's quite yellow at the moment. That's a bit too yellow, so I think I'll add more of the browns. I'm going to just spray all my page as well so that I can get this moving around. So I'm going to add some more of the bronze and then I'm going to start moving this around. Hello Liz with my paintbrush. I did add a little bit of the black powder but I couldn't find it this morning. Okay so that should be enough. Let me just spray that extra powder again. So this is going to form my first colouring and let's get a paintbrush. If you wanted to keep the colours separate as well, you could apply them in layers and dry in between. Um, if you can quite see, see the edge. That's um, important to mop some of that out because that's where our um, pages are kind of stitched into the book. So if we get that too wet, it's going to um, potentially, you know, damage the, the um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, the, the structure of the book. So try not to uh, get that too wet. I mean, they're very decent books, so I, it's probably nothing to be too concerned about. Um, just me being paranoid. Um, and also you get ugly, like sharp lines if you leave that in there. I'm just going to mop that a little bit. Okay, that's quite a nice colour already. I think I will go over this with some paints as well. Um, I'm going to dry that there and see how that looks. Oh, thanks Cleo. Um, I've got the plastic on here, so being careful not to melt. Um, just a scrap of paper in between will probably be a lot safer. So if you are using plastic like me, please do be careful. Don't set fire to anything or melt plastic to your book. Um, I'm quite used to doing this, so I'm I'm okay. <laughs> just be careful. And you can move your page around as well, get some drips going on. And I can see, which is really cool actually, um, I'm going to think it's from the rice paper um, that how you build colours, so you, you make colours sometimes the way they're printed, there's different layers of colours put in and you can see little patches of blue appearing, I think it's from the rice papers because it's more to the edge, so that's really cool, it's added like a little bluey tinge to everything as well. And if any areas are a bit too wet you can um, just dab those off gently. And you have to remember that this paste um, they're gonna they're semi-resist so it's not like if we put a gloss um, on there it's gonna completely resist. But they do have a semi-resist, so it, it's taken to it a little bit, um, but not fully. So if we wanted to completely cover that, we would need to use something um, like a paint, uh, an acrylic paint, or wax will work, which we'll probably add a bit of later. Right, this is dry enough, I can take my uh, stencils out, so I can dry this properly without melting my stencils <laughs> and okay. um, get some paint I'll grab my Dina paints and look for some suitable colours just to carry on Mostly around the edge, really. A bit more work on colour. Hello, Wendy. Okay, 
so you can see when you dry these um, magic paints and colour glows, the metallic really starts to dazzle and pop out. in the moment. going to work on the edges with ancient Dina Wakely acrylic paint which is a metallic and impasto paint a very thick um, matte paint from Finnebear so I like to do these with my finger um, they're great paints for kind of finger painting and you can control them my page is still a little bit wet in places so that will water it down a bit And they just um, keep the texture so nicely so you can even see fingerprints in these paints that's how thick they are that's what an impasto is so if you've seen like impasto painting like you'll see in a lot of Italian um, buildings it's a very thick textured and very pigmented paint and I like it as well because it's matte a lot of the time acrylics are glossy so it's just something a bit different so I'm just going on the areas where I think it needs a little bit more I'm not going to go all the way around I don't want to sort of frame it too strongly if you know what I mean I don't want it to look unnatural oh, that paste is not quite dry whoops <laughs> and the paints can be used as well to get a rust effect you don't have to use a paste um, you can build up layers of matte and uh, metallic paints to get a really nice rusty look too okay that'll do with the dark paint um the dina ones are also quite textured but more not as thickly as the uh, finnebo ones i think i'll just carry on with my finger so really yummy colors so and now we'll go anywhere that still needs a bit more i'm going to finish my page off i think at the end with a touch of wax so anywhere i'm still not quite happy with there's no need to panic and i, I love painting like this i think it's um you know we love to do it as children i think it's just yeah, it's quite freeing um, and you really see the texture because these are quite bodied, heavy bodied paints. You can really, really see the texture when you use your finger. It's nice. Okay, I think we're almost there. So you can see, despite the fact that this is very flat, we've got a lot of interest going on by using all these different layers right i now need to give this a good dry before we start adding any papers because i'm going to be gluing if i try and glue on a wet surface that is not going to work thank you kasha so yes before we start adding adhesives we need to be dry as we will just get a gloopy mess and it won't be a very effective adhesive and everything will be sliding all over the place and you're just going to get a gloopy gluey mess that's not going to look good at all so a really good dry now 
and I like to use those um, contrasts so we've got the matte paint and the metallic paints on the background we've got these very vintage papers and we're going to use some more modern papers now um, it really does give the eye something to look at now at the moment there's no focal point to my page the eyes sort of dancing everywhere and this is just the background so I need to make sure I build a focal point as we carry on now and when I would do on a scrapbook layout say for here for instance I would add lots of foam or chipboard between my layers how well you can see that to give this dimensional look but we can't really do too much of that on here and I'm going to be adding chipboard embellishments so my paper layers are just going to be one on top of the other on this occasion because I can't build it too big so we've used those I've got a bit of cork I said I could use so I'm going to have a look through my paper scraps here what would work if that could work work so these are um, AB studio papers mostly um, some from diva some from love of old things so this is love of old things this writing one that's diva um, that's a bit too pale this is that same page again Think that would be really nice. Oh, are we getting angry faces? Oh, why? What's up? What's happened? Have I missed something? Is there anything we can help with? I didn't see that. Is that you, Kasha, on the um, text? Thank you. Let us know if there's something we can fix, if there's a problem. That could go. Okay, I'm going to discard all these green pieces for this piece because it just doesn't go with the colours I've created. Um, we've got these little strips could work. See, I've got all these. I did a little album. So all these little bits are now really useful because I've got strips pre-cut. Yeah, definitely. And here's a little 6x6 six six pad as well. This was another small album. So I've got all these strips cut nicely now that will be great to layer up. Here's some more bits. Okay, I think that's going to give us plenty. This is from 13 Arch Travel Album that we did on mine and Kasha's page. Hello, lovely. <laughs> right, so I think that's more than enough to be carrying on with. I could use a bit of that. That was just where I wiped my brush off, I think. And I did think about this alcohol ink background, but I think it's just too modern looking for the look I've created. So that will do work and I'll put that away again as I organised everything right oops hair bobble don't think we need that so let's just give one last check that it's dry oh a little bit up there that isn't Okay, and hopefully you can catch that metallic. I will hold it up at the end so you can see. Hello Shona! Yay, you made it. I tried to add you but it wouldn't let me for some reason. Okay, so I'm going to start. I've got kind of a gap here so I would like to use that area so I don't lose all my nice stenciling that I've done. That needs to be a bit more dry. Okay, 
so that's where I'm going to build up my piece I think I don't like going slap bang in the middle so I'm going to put it slightly off center so that's going to be where I start and um, normally when I'm building I don't know Hopefully everything's okay. I think it was Louise. I hope everything's all right, Louise. Um, so normally I would play um, with the layers and take a photo when I'm off camera. And um, so then I can deconstruct it and reassemble because I've got a photo to refer to. Um, obviously I can't do that on camera. Um, so I'm going to switch now. The medium acrylic I used before will probably be fine because it's just paper but I like to at this point just to be sure I'm going to switch to my 3D gel and I'm just going to go for it today so if I like the way something looks I'm going to commit and stick it down. Um, now my advice normally is not to uh, stick right to the edge because if you think oh that would look nice tucked in there and you've gone right to the edge you can't lift that up and stick it under so I tend not to stick right to the edge and also adds a little bit of texture then as well where the edges poke up so what I'm going to do is chop this in half oops that's far too much gel Oh, okay, so maybe no worries. Well, hopefully everything's all right, Louise. If it's an accident, then that's absolutely fine, of course. Just wanted to make sure you're okay. <laughs> so I'm going to go with that nice dark brown bit I've got. Um, let's have a bit of a longer strip. Now I've got the... Um, the border still on so I need to remember to take any of those bits off and we can tear and distress any of the edges if we like hello Julia So I'm, now what I'm doing is I'm building a base for where my focal point's going to sit. And I haven't actually decided exactly what that's going to be just yet. So I will need to make a decision in a moment. So yeah, keeping strips like this, I mean that's really thin and I nearly threw it away. And I'm glad I didn't, because look now how easy I've made my life on this page. I've got all these bits cut out ready to use. So, um, let's go that side this time. Super duper handy. And by not using foam dots or anything, but keeping this nice and flat. And the gel means where, you know, we've got some dimension because papers are on top of each other. The gel will allow me to just squish it down to the page nice and easy. It's a bit too yellow. Um, what else have we got? Um, I think that's too white, the background. Maybe some of this brownie a bit. And you will cover up some things you do. And you just have to deal, you know, you just have to accept that in mixed media. But that's why I would always say keep your really nice, um, move it to the right. Am I not quite in camera? Thank you, Kasha. Is that better? Um, yes, I would save your really posh embellishments and really, really pretty bits till the end. So you don't end up covering them. And when you do stenciling, you know, go quite far out. So 
you don't cover it all. Hopefully you can see better now. Or do you mean the other way? That way. That's better, isn't it? Um, I think we're nearly done with papers. Some more of this. I really like this. Drawers. And maybe a little bit more of that one. Okay. Now I can stick this down because I'm not going to add any more there. Right, I think that looks pretty good. Just going to have a look. Oh, that's quite interesting one. Let's have a bit of that as well. yeah i say you know don't be too silly like if you've got the tiniest little circle of paper you know and it's just it really isn't useful <laughs> then don't keep that but all the you know these are beautiful papers that why would i throw those away um so i will put them back into my stash oh i had this cork as well i might use that in a minute under my Got to put them in my bin. Putting in my photo. Right, so now we need to think about the focal point. What is actually my piece about? So, ideally, you've decided this beforehand, but in art journaling, that's not always the case, you know. Sometimes you just want to have a play. So, I thought I might use one of these. This is chipboard set 226 from AB Studio, which are these really interesting. They're like laser engraved um, images. They're really cool. So, I thought we might use one of those. Perhaps. Let's see. He looks quite grand on there, doesn't he? And in there, you also get these little words. I really love this set. It's probably my favourite one of these new ones they've done. Uh, so we've got 1890, photo, vintage, atelier, diary. And I've already used some of them, I think. So we could have vintage photo, perhaps. So I'm going to use the at I want him. Do I want her? She's got a bit of a princess layer hair going on. I think I'll have her actually. I like the shape of that one better as well. They're brilliant, aren't they, Helen? I need to order some more because I love them. Um, here's an example of some other ones. Uh, this has got clocks and things. So there's that. Um, now, what else? I've got. This is a spoon set from Hobbylicious, but, and it layers up, so you've got three layers like this, but I thought I might actually just use it as an embellishment, and, uh, like this. Something like that. So I'm going to use that. Um, I've got some pretty flowers. Now I think they're a bit too delicate actually for this look, so I'm not going to use that one. Um, but I've got this one I really like. I keep going to use and I haven't. This is Chipboard 125 from AB Studio. Yeah, the clocks are lovely. I don't know what number that one is because I've got a package with no number on for that one. Um, where did I just put it? Oh, yeah, but it's a bit more of the um, gothy, quirky sets. So you've got like the skulls and things in. It's quite cool. We could have a clock. Oh, actually, we could. Where well, we've got this bit at the bottom. We could do. No, I think that looks a bit unnatural. We could add it on like that though. I think I'm gonna snip 
Don't look, ladies. Because I'm not using it as a spoon. I'm going to snip that bit off there. Maybe do something like that. Yeah, the spoons are lovely. Like those, um, what are the spoons called? You collect. And then I got to this set, one, two, five. I'm going to use a piece of this, I think. So they're quite big, so I'm not going to need to use all of this. I'm just going to. And they pop out pretty easy. Just need to wiggle. You can use a pokey tool if it helps. I'm going to wiggle a bit out. Thank you, Kasha. And I'm going to snip off just a, a bit. I don't want it, this whole piece because that's too big for this page. I'll just have a piece like that to carry on my shape that I've created. So chipboards are great in art journals. They add dimension without being too much. So you're going to cut that. Oops into two separate bits oops I caught it right so let's let's sort this right we'll pull that bit off then as I caught it <laughs> I'll put this upside down right so we're gonna have that there this little piece down here Um, I don't know about the clock. I don't think that works actually. I'm not going to have the clock. Right. Um, put more of that there. And I'm just going to play now where my embellishments work. Um, what else is in here? Oh. I've got quite a lot of these bags of uh, various MDFs and chipboards and things that I collect. So let's see what I can find. Uh, I need a little something else. Excuse me while I rustle a moment. from our K&K kit that may look at that oh yes 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 that looks better okay yeah we're getting there hello Jeremy hope you have a lovely holiday are you still on your way back or are you back Possibly. So that's a hobby delicious leaf. Uh, what else? You're driving home. It's probably a beautiful drive, I would imagine, especially in this weather. Or is it a bit too much? No, that's too fluid next to that. So I need another leaf, I think. Right. Again. Oh, I've got a feather. That could work. To echo this leaf. Yes, there we go, that's better. Right, we're getting there, we're getting there. And I need to obviously colour some of this. You have to speak French to you now, because you're still here. Oh, uh, bonjour. Mademoiselle Jolene. Um, 
uh, commissar? I don't know. I never learnt French at all, and I'm useless at languages. Was that any good? <laughs> oh, I was going to have this as my title, wasn't I? But I'll need something to pop under that so it stands out a little bit. Okay, right. And I've got this bit of cork. I'd quite like to add a bit of that. Now you can die cut this stuff. This is from Kaisercraft. I've had it quite a while. And I like to just tear it. So I'm going to add some of that under there. Right. And that actually works on top of that white paper. Wonderful. Uh, tray beyond. No, tray on. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> you see why we're no good at languages. Magnifique. <laughs> um, right, yeah, anyway. Do you know what? I actually quite like the natural colours of this. So I think I'm going to leave it. I like all the different browns. They work with the background and the white sort of pops off. So I'm going to deconstruct this now and then start sticking. So I'm going to use my 3D gel. Definitely want a good gel at this point. These are... Um, slightly thicker and they're going on to potentially a little bit of an uneven surface so we need something a bit more to stick this down and um, what you can do is just keep bringing back your focal image to make sure that where you're putting things look right and with a gel you do usually i've never come across a gel that's like instant and that's it you're stuck <laughs> so with a gel as opposed to like a glue gun or some tapes which i really wouldn't use tape for something like this anyway but that's an instant you're stuck and that's it so i like gels as well because i have a bit of time to wiggle things about Now this is a little bit um, of refusing to stick just because I've got all these paper layers in the middle so it's more dimensional than the outside so we just need to help that stick a bit. You could use your glue gun, uh, your heat gun rather, to set the gel a bit if it's really refusing. So let's have a look. I want to get this bit right. Somewhere like that. So I'm going to apply gel to the bottom to stick it to that bit. Absolutely. All suggestions are welcome. <laughs> it's pretty warm. Yeah, I think I'll have a bit more. Yes, inks around the edge definitely help things pop. I'm going to be using some waxes to do that um, in a moment. But yes, you are right, because it's a similar colour. That would definitely help. Um, I'm going to have a bit more of this. And then I'll have a bit more over here. So I've kind of a little patchwork quilt there. Aha! <laughs> yes, and I'm going to faff about a bit at the end and uh, see what needs what. So let's have a look. Yep, I'm happy with that there. So I'm going to stick that. Um, you may find you need to use a bit of chipboard or something underneath areas if it's really wobbling or something's really flapping about. But I've used very flat things, so I'm okay on this layout. So I can actually be very lazy on this layout. And um, I don't need to do that. I'm going to have this here. I may actually get out my liquid acrylic in black and go around some parts. Right, so that's the main bit. I've got my title. 
I think it needs a little bit of bounce. So everything's here. We've got the clock here. Draws the eye a little bit. I think it needs something just kind of there though. <laughs> Are you waving hello? Hello. Um, so I'm going to dive into my metal bag because these colours will go very nicely. That's a bit too much, I think. See what I mean about not going right to the edge because now I can tuck. Which way round do you go? That way. I can tuck some bits in. That's better. That colour just draws the eye a little bit that way. That's it. That's what I needed. Right, and I can use my gel for that because this dries clear. And I love doing this when you squeeze it through the hole. It's really satisfying. It's like popping a spot. <laughs> Is that just me? Am I gross? Right, so we're pretty much done there. I feel like it needs, I've got a title, but I think it needs a bit more words. So I'm going to go to a sticker book. Uh, where's that one? With the... This is the Tim Holtz clipping sticker book. So it's got different texts and the backgrounds are a little bit coloured. So they're really good for vintage projects. And they've got really funny expressions. Um, really vintage words. So I like them. She merely went on with life. Isn't that a bit depressing? She didn't enjoy life. She merely went on with life. Um, what's it say? So we've got a vintage photo, a vintage lady. <laughs> Are you also whistling while you work, Cleo? Um, what did I just see? Curious looking... She was a beautiful child. I love this one. It's so good. I could just read these all day. Uh, let's pick something. Do, 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 do. Taken from the past. Well, that just goes well, doesn't it? So let's have that. Now I'm sticking this on to a very uneven, gluey, painty surface. So I'm going to add a bit of gel because that glue on the sticker will dry out and I'm going to actually go on this side and I will just wipe off that excess gel taken from the past excellent so that's that now finishing touches so I don't want to build any more dimension if I'm honest that's a little bit more than I should have built already that will end up with a very, very fat book, but that's okay. I don't mind. Right, so now we're going to do just some bits around the edges. Um, like Jolene suggested, we want to make certain bits pop out a bit more. So I'm not going to use black. I'm going to go, if I can find it, mm, somewhere. Umber, which is like a dirty green brown colour. Can I find it? No. Too many paints, too many paints. Can you have too many paints? Is that possible? I don't think I've got enough yet. Uh, every colour but umber. Come on, umber, where are you? Umber, here we go. Umber. Liquid acrylic. So very, very, very pigmented uh, liquid acrylic. So have all the properties of an acrylic, but in a liquid form. So they will dry with a slight gloss and will be permanent. So I spray the water next to that, just like I was on about with the colour glows. And I'm going to get a small paintbrush. 
and I'm going to use this to pick out any areas that are disappearing a little bit. So I'm going to go like a little bit stronger. My paints are a bit funny because they were a dodgy batch that were frozen and I thought well I'm going to try to use them instead of throwing them all away. So yours won't come like that. Right, here we go. So I'm going to go around here. To make this all worn and old looking. And it'll help prop that photo up a bit as well. Concentrating. <laughs> okay, I've got a bit of the gel there. Can you see it's resisting the uh, paint? Because that's gloss, the 3D gel. So I can fix that with a bit of wax. That's not a problem. Um, maybe a little bit onto this whiter paper. Not all the way because I want that word to pop out still. And I'll go try and carefully go around the words a little bit. Come on, we have got a bit lost. This is a long demo, isn't it? Sorry, I think I'm enjoying myself and I've got carried away with the time. Okay. Right, and that's enough. And final touch, as I've kept you all so long now, I've just realised. Enjoying this process, obviously, it's the time has flown away. Um, a little bit of wax. So I will probably go to my trusty old favourite, wherever it's hiding. It there yes aged brass by prima and we're gonna do a couple of little bits in that So it's a bit of a highlighter, we're kind of putting it on gently and then just skimming our finger over the top. Um, it will look different on the wood because I haven't gessoed it, but I like, I like that look, how wax straight onto the dark wood looks. Just get like a little shimmer. And this will really pick up those crackles as well, wax, and that stenciling. So you can think of it a bit like a highlighter. So all those bits that have disappeared, you can bring them back to life. And if we don't like some of this painting, we can alter that. And one last thing I lied, I'm not quite finished. I'll just use this to cover my image, pretend it's a photo. I'm going to add some black splatters just for a bit of contrast. So I'll get, if I can find, <laughs> some black gesso. I've got some new big pots, but now I can't find anything. Mm -hmm. No, I can't find that. So I'll use, I don't know what I'll use actually. One second. Da, da, 
Paint pen. This will be instead. Let me use for a while. Let me just right. No, maybe it, oh, it will splatter. Yes, all on the wrong page. <laughs> Find my black gesso at the moment, so what, I'll just do squeeze some of it onto the uh, desk instead. <laughs> do it that way and get a paintbrush and some water. Let's do it that way. That's better. I'm not going to cover the walls in black paint then. Okay, we're done. Right, there we have it. My vintagey um, journal page. I shall lift this up now for you. So you can catch the colours. Oh, don't knock over the water pot. You can see all that. So, different ways of using rice papers. Um, you could use tissue papers instead. Hello, Michelle. Um, chipboards, um, playing with the looks of different colours of woods and chipboards to get a vintage vibe and also if you fancy being lazy so you don't have to gesso or paint anything um, and using up those scraps we built this lovely centrepiece just with strips and scraps of paper so I hope you like that and hopefully gave you some ideas uh, Shona thank you Michelle and I'll get this photographed and put up um, so you can see it better. Apologies for the light in it. It's horrendous in here with the sun at the moment. Um, so thank you for joining me and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye. And oh, um, the goodies you can get on thompsonscraftsupplies.com. Bye guys.